Do the technical experts play a role within each of our departments, our, our um, um, you know, executive directors here in, in COG or, or uh, FCTA, the, the ones that are experts out there uh, for the county, Steve White uh, uh, or Scott Mosier, uh, where, where do they play a role? And really it's all the way through the process, but it has to be up front, uh, I think number one, with the administrative team and, and it allows for that. And that is um, an administrative team uh, with, the, with the public forums for people to understand or to be educated in, um, for example, what, what is a pavement management index? How is that determined? Uh, why is it, you know, cost more money for older roads that are in poor conditions to be, um, to be repaired or slurry than it would uh, roads that perhaps, um, you know, aren't as old. Uh, for example, we have some roads in Fresno, people ask, why are we working on them? Uh, 99 in Shaw, well, it's because it's $80,000 per lane mile versus a, a one on, perhaps on Shaw, that may be $600,000 a lane mile because it's older. And when you have limited funding, which one do you focus on? Um, and so those are some of the things, uh, the, what, what is a grade separation and why are they important to, to jurisdictions, um, you know, to allow for reduced congestion and, uh, and you know, uh, making sure that our traffic flows, uh, where we have trains that are stopping, you see high-speed rail doing a number of those on our 99 quarter where high-speed rail is. Um, you know, why, why is it important to have um, interchanges done? Like we, we have a number of them at North and 99, uh, at Shaw 99, they're horrible. Traffic backs up, becomes an unsafe condition on, on the freeway. So, and those are expensive projects. And so the, the community needs to, I think, have an understanding of that as they're uh, making decisions on priorities. I did, I did want to go back to page 10 on the um, on the slide. And the, and the third bullet I think is, because we've had some discussion about uh, what that means, and I think um, the, the wording really, where, where it talks about the uh, review and vote on the final plan that could cause some confusion as to, is that the final plan? Or is that the final draft? Or is that what the community has recommended? And I think we understand, at least in the group, that it is to approve the community recommended draft. And that along the way, there could still be modifications made um, by the cities, by the counties, by the COG, by the FCTA. Um, you certainly, you know, those changes you know, the more drastic they are, the more uh, issues we may have with the community. Uh, and then also on page 10, the fourth bullet, uh, where it doesn't say in there, but the drafting teams really should be a part of every one of the forums to be able to hear firsthand uh, what the, the community priorities are. So when they write that in. And, um, and then on the, um, the, there is a distinct difference uh, and I'm not sure, you know, sometimes we understand that, between what a facilitation team is and their level of expertise versus a marketing team. And sometimes we hire marketing teams to go out to facilitate community forums. And it's really not their skill set. And so there are a number of facilitation teams, may not even be from Fresno, that do a remarkable job they do for us on our parks, uh, on our senior center to get, gather that community feedback. And then the marketing team is certainly somebody we would want to hire to market the Measure C renewal. And that would probably be with private dollars. And, uh, and I think that's, um, that's, that's really it, all I wanted to add. But I, I, I do wanna make sure that, that you know, the cities understand, the county understands, the COG and the FCTA, that they're, um, the decision making still lies with the elected officials, but it is heavily influenced by the community. I do have a comment. You know, first of all, I'd like to thank you all the of you guys that have met and put this together. Uh, we want this to be successful, and I think to be successful, we need to hear every stakeholder, you know, every taxpayer out there. I think, you know, this is a great plan. Uh, I don't think it can be achieved by 2024 
uh, meet with 2026 with this plan, but it's a great plan, I think, you know, hearing what everybody out there has to say, you know, uh, I'm talking from the city of Mendoza, and, you know, the first thing they said, fix the roads, fix the roads, you know, they even made some memes about, uh, they're walking in the moon, you know, and, and so that's not, that's not right, you know, how can something, you know, so, you know, visible and be ignored? We need to fix them, and, uh, you know, we live in a first world country with third world problems, not acceptable either, so. Kudos to everyone involved. Um, the presentation was wonderful. I think it was very well done and thought out. I understood it, followed it through. Actually have no questions. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to give you all uh, you know, some kudos and say congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Is there any other questions from the board? I've been open it up to the public. So there's no questions from the board, so I can open it to the public. Okay. Do you have a timer that will tell you when you have I a minute left? I think we need to get a timer. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll time you. Okay, time's up. Well, I'll, I'll put my presentation real short if I only have three minutes. Uh, but I'll start off by asking you that, that, I, that I'm asking and hoping that you will table this item and not put it on your agenda until uh, you have further review and discussion hear out some of the thoughts that I have regarding this plan. And being one of the 10 that was in that group, and as someone mentioned earlier, it wasn't a sanctioned group by the COG or, or by the LCTA. It's just folks on the side seeing if we can find a path to get to where we need to go. Um, I'm the one of the 10 who, who does not agree with what's before you today. And, and my first ask is that you all very carefully read this plan that's before you. Every, every word, I think there's a lot in there that you need to see. And I think I think you need to ask your city managers to read this so they can understand the impact of, of this document to get this moves forward. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, I'll, I'll mention real very quickly is, I'm here for two reasons. One is I was a part of the previous two measures see, that's done, I don't have to tell you what they've done for our communities, improving them and giving us mobility. Uh, the other is, as you know, many of you may know, I, I wore the hat of elected official for over 20 years as board member, a present city council, and present county board of supervisors, so I have perspective. But part of that perspective, having sat in this room, is to have tremendous respect for what it took for you all to get to where you are, you know, to walk in the knock on the doors and, and wait in election night to see if you won. That's not an easy thing to do, not many people can do it, but you're here. And the reason why you're here is because the people that voted for you, your communities gave you the responsibility to make decisions on their behalf. If this document takes that away from you, no. and I'm gonna explain it to you, and I'm gonna give you the ask for the respect that I gave you all when, when you spoke. And bypassing a lot of the early, because I only have a minute and a half left, I'm gonna go straight to the framework. Okay, if you look at the administrative team. Can, can I interrupt, can I ask, since Henry was part of the actual 10, can you get more time than three minutes? Yeah. I agree because um, it'd be part of your presentation, maybe. Yeah, okay. But, and I won't take a lot because I know it's late. But if you just look at the administrative team along with the structure, okay, when you get to the last sentence, it says that if this, this group has no decision making authority. Okay? You're talking about the t your two directors, the director of the COG. When you're talking about the director of the SCTA who will be on this committee, then there's this group of 10 
okay? And what their charge is to make sure the process is flowing. So the roles of these folks have been diminished tremendously within the staff that you will see in helping you get to the, to the end decision making that you traditionally made in this type of process and other things that you work on. They've been, it's been relegated to, they only will be a part of securing the facilitation team, so the consultants, et cetera. Okay, what's that process today? That process today is you as the board make a decision and say, Tony or whoever's in that chair, uh, we're gonna move forward with this. Uh, we need a consultant for this project. Uh, Tony has staff who put on RFP, they vet them, they bring them to you, give you a recommendation, you say yes or no. What this process does, it gives that authority to this group of 10. And they have an internal rule saying 70% of those 10 will be making the decisions on who your consultants, et cetera, will be. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, when you go to the project facilitation team, same thing. This team does not have decision-making authority. You go down to the drafting team. This team does not have decision-making authority. It's not equal back to your community forum. And don't get me wrong, I, I am, and I think I've had a career where I've always valued and gone out of my way to make sure that the community is involved in the extent that it's possible for the decision making that we as elected have to make. But at the end of the day, we make the decisions, or you make the decisions. But, I, you know, I listen carefully to the community forum. I don't think they really even know quite yet the truth. Who is this community forum? Who are they? But the decision making now has been taken to this community forum, whoever that might be, to, pre to prepare a plan that will then, if you go to the uh, page A flow chart, the community forum approves the plan. Not the administrative team, the community forum. The administrative team and the other two teams are simply staff to the community forum. And then it goes to the city's councils and board of supervisors, and on that you can see where it goes. Okay? Now, I know that we always talk about we're gonna invite the farmers, we're gonna invite the school board, we're gonna invite this, we're gonna invite that. Okay, but I think we all know a lot of times folks don't come to meetings for a variety of reasons. So really, it becomes is whoever really does take the time to go into those meetings and uh, you know talk the loudest they control the, the dialogue, okay? My concern when I went into that meeting first, first day, and I know, I know, I know they laid out some, some, some uh, objectives that we had. I mean, one thing I really liked about it, I mean, I think people were honest with each other and respectful. I mean, obviously we didn't all agree, so we came from different perspectives. But the one thing that I went in, and I'll be very straight up, I went in and, and advocated for the meetings I was there, uh, Hey, what, we have a process that's worked for 40 years. We've built some great infrastructure in this community. Yes, the last one failed. But if you look at the if you look at the chart and, and where this thing's won and where it lost, I mean, you just look at the West Fresno counties if you have that graph in front of you. I mean, you're talking about high 60, 70 percent. The communities of San Joaquin, Fireball, um, all of West Fresno, with the exception of Plano. Hi. That tells me you won't beat your jobs in, in representing your folks out there. And it tells me the voters have the confidence you to, to do it. And as well as Veronica and the folks that they represent. A lot of their work is in West Fresno County. That tells me they did their job too. But we just didn't hit the threshold. And you go throughout that list, it passed pretty strongly every day. And why didn't it? Well, we had opposition, no question. I respect that. People have a right to oppose something. And they went after the Republicans. That was smart. That's what I would have done. And that's what brought the measure down. Okay? So we had this group of 10, and now it looks like you may be considering going to this process with another group of 10. Where are the Republicans? You know, where, where are those folks that voted against this plan? Obviously, they, they had some things they saw that was wrong. Where are they? Who has been talking to them? You know, so it, it goes on and on. I mean, we, you could have, instead of a group of 10, you could have a group of 100. But there's a lot of special interests in this community that should be represented in the Senate to develop the plan that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, a lot of them won't come. They won't come because they voted for you to do your jobs and get this thing done.
And I would argue that I, mean, I think you have two great leaders who are, who are retiring, uh, Tony and Mike. Uh, we wish them well. But the opportunity that I see is that I know there was a lot of mistrust that part across the way. And we, we kind of regurgitated that the first day of the week, uh, a lot of mistrust. A lot of mistrust for elected officials in this county. Um, a lot of mistrust of the county president and, and how uh, they may or may not spend their money in disadvantaged communities, in the unincorporated communities. But I can tell you this, having been a supervisor for 12 years, if anybody in this room thinks that anybody is going to create a plan that's going to spend the county's money for them, they won't put it on the ballot. They won't. So what I, what I would argue is you have a process that has worked for you. You have directors that you hire that you obviously have the confidence in to do their job that they've been doing. I think the opportunity with new folks coming in is maybe give that a chance too. Maybe ask your new director.